Welcome, Marvin. Thank you for joining us today for this interview. So please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about yourself. So yeah, my, my name is Marvin Kala Ike Brinu, and I am a coordinator and instructor with IZI LLC. I live here now in the San Francisco Bay Area for over 30 years. So I took my first class in 1997. So I know these things about marriage. So my marriage didn't really start really well. You know, five years into the marriage, uh, my ex-wife filed for divorce, you know. So I was like, for if some reason I was, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know what to do. There's so much things that comes up. And uh, so my best friend actually told me, you should go and take this class. I think it's going to help you. If I look back now, if I look back now, that's the best decision I ever made in my life, in this lifetime, of course. And um, then I, uh, all this cleaning, and then, then I met my, my uh, second wife, Miriam. So uh it's so there's always reason for everything there's there's no such thing as coincidence you know and uh accident uh it happens for a reason and i'm so grateful that that happened so looking back i don't know how i got out of it but uh we have a good communication now um, during that time it was tough because you know when lawyers and lawyers talk to each other it's it's a mess and and the rest and the, uh, and the uh, result would be we have two kids small kids at a time and the result would be the kids will suffer and everyone else around us suffers so the the uh, Sith process really is the one that helped me and get out of it and I I am so grateful for this gift that came to my life. I didn't realize that how powerful this system is and uh, I'm just grateful and I see everything unfolds for me every day of my life, every moment. Thank you so much for sharing that, Marvin. So when you initially came to know about self-identity through Ho'oponopono, what was it that made you realize that this is it for you? What was that... How did that happen where you felt that this is what you is what you're meant to follow and practice in your life? Um, at the time, I didn't really know that it is, but I just felt something is different. Uh, when I took that class, that's how I met Dr. E. Halya Kalayulen. And, uh, and of course, over the years, we became friends. He became a mentor to me and a grandfather to my children. And uh, there, I mean, I don't treat him as anything else other than family. So when I was taking that class, um, after that class, I felt like, I, I feel so light. And, and uh, when I went to that class, it's completely different because when I went to the class, I was stressed, I feel like, you know, I have the, all the problems in the world, but the, after that weekend, something just clicked inside you that you don't even understand. And I did not know that I'm going to be staying with this one. I didn't even know. But over the years, the continuous cleaning, the more you do, the more it goes deeper and deeper and things just comes up. So again, I'm so grateful that my best friend is the one that said, go to that, this class. And I didn't even know what it was. Just because I trusted him, I went to that class and there you go. And here I am now. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. So when we talk about uh, applying SIT process on cleaning with marriage, so how has uh, Ho'oponopono Sit helped you in your married life? Tremendously. I, I'm just going to say the, uh, the benefits are legion. Uh, there are so many things that comes up in a marriage. So if, 
for me, um, when I open my mouth, if you try to open your mouth and you try to engage, there's going to be disagreement, okay? Somebody wants to win. And uh, I learned this so much from Dr. Yulen that says, like, hey, uh, if you open your mouth, you know, you know, you're not going to win at all. I mean, you're going to let this replayed memories, re-experience all these things that you have experienced before lifetimes ago, and it will come up and then give you an opportunity to do it. So I know, I'm aware now that my, my current wife now, uh, we've been together for like so many, many, many lifetimes ago. And it's about time for me to clean up my, my mess that I created, accumulated and accepted over through these years and lifetimes. And so married life is not easy. Uh, if you just try to analyze it and fix and manage it, there's some such thing as, you know, managing things because you cannot really manage it. But if you allow the inspiration the the if you want to be in zero, then things will just come and flow. You're going to be in the flow. You know, so having being in Mary's life, there's always a lot of things that will come up. Not only that, I mean, when you married somebody, you married also the family. So you have a lot of extended family. And those children or siblings of your wife or, or spouse will have also again married to, into somebody so the, the 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 whole thing is like it's like a chain so you are married you're all connected to these things so if you don't do your cleaning all these things will always come up just imagine you go into a family affair and everybody shows up with the children they're they're you know parents grandparents all those things so if you look at it it's just very if you really try to analyze it it's very complicated the best way is of course just applying the tools of the that i learned from self-identity through open up on or see and allow it to come to me naturally what's right and perfect will unfold and i really love that or a phrase, it will unfold. Because you cannot really control it. Only God can, can control it. Only God can give you that. Peace. And to its, what I say, peace and love. Because love is God. Wonderful. Thank you. And what do you recommend or what do you do when uh, you know, a conflict is brewing up or some disagreement is happening and there is a temptation or sometimes even a need to speak. What do you do at that time? <laughs> well, you're, yeah, and you cannot help it. You can't help it. Sometimes you open your mouth and there you go. And we, I, we have, me and my wife also had like disagreements. Then I would realize that, oh, wait a second. I should have been cleaning on that instead of opening my mouth. Again, disagreements, you know, trying to argue or trying to make a point doesn't really work, doesn't work. You will end up, you know, it's like a uh, um, tug of war, you know, you have, you're pulling one, you pull that, uh, that uh, rope and she pulls back. So you pull it again, instead of saying the, uh, the tools or, you know, doing the tools, then instead of pulling that back and forth, you just cut the rope and, and then there you go. You know, so no one, I mean, then nothing is, you know, stretching back and forth. You cut the rope and be free. And that's what I wanted to be free. And again, it's always, you cannot really help not to have that disagreement because you, they, they're gonna, they grow up with different experiences, your wife or spouse, and I grow up with different experiences. And also we have different experiences with our families, you know, and there's a lot more, you know, so everyone is different. 
you grow up with different choices in your life and it will come to you at, at some point and come back and, I'll, uh, and and this is where i am grateful because then the divinity of god showed me what i need to do to be free so then i can take the choice and be free be free from re replayed memories for eons and eons of time and so the best things are are to are going to happen for you thank you as you know they also say that marriage is the perfect way to get more cleaning done because when you are living with somebody so intimately so close it's like they're mirroring everything they're bringing up triggering everything so it's it's a great opportunity actually to get a lot of cleaning because if you're living all alone and secluded and then you know you may be not triggered and might be peaceful but it is an opportunity to clean and let go and let god absolutely i i completely agree every moment of my life is always a choice so for me i see when i do my cleaning and i do i apply the process and i apply the tools i look at my wife even if sometimes i don't look at her physically but if her face would come up in my mind and i i see how beautiful that is and uh, things will come to me and say wow look at that i i begin to realize and actually appreciate more her existence and, and her coming to my life and doing all this stuff but if you're in this in a dis disagreement for some reason things will just i mean things will just fly but again applying the, the tools is the best thing that i can do in my life so either you want to cut off and be free or just let it continue to rumble on and on and on until something will come up again so for me that's the best thing in my life seeing that you know thank you and as you mentioned uh, that uh, you studied the class with dr ilakila hulen so and you have been a close friend with him so any advice that he would give about marriage anything that he would say about marriage or talk about marriage relationship <laughs> he always says this to me you know marvin we have to always take care of a woman you know so it's always stuck in my mind about that sentence we always have to take care of a woman because if we do then things will just come to us so it's like you have to have the it's like a yin and yang in your life right so once the the balance will come so when you're in balance you're at zero and then then inspiration comes in so always take care of your woman and then uh he always says this to me you know your your wife miriam i think i think she is really a gift from god and and i'm i don't really want to say that to miriam but <laughs> to my wife uh but that's the truth i see it that way and i'm so grateful for that and uh it's for me i've learned so much about it and so learn so much more knowing about yourself and what i need to do to be free and when i'm free i can uh, bring her to, uh, as well to be free so i'm not just freeing myself i'm freeing her her family related ancestors and everything around us so that's the beauty of it thank you for sharing that and when you see uh, you know I, you have kids uh, and the youngsters nowadays there's a lot of uh, uh, lack of trust in the institution of marriage and there's a lot of uh, discomfort and a lot of fear of intimate relationships and what would you say about that so for me uh when i see that kids they have their own 
mind, you know. So when I see the, those kind of things, it's just about fear. So when you are in fear, you are in your fear, you're, you're actually in, in a, a state of memory. The memory is taking over in your mind, in your mind. So then if you are in fear, you're disconnected from, all, from the, the inspiration, divine grace from God and so the best way is really when I see that I only do my my apply the tools and do my cleaning so I can be free and I can get them to be free Mike I have three of these kids and over the years I learned so much to just shut my mouth and do my cleaning without telling them what to do have you tried telling somebody what to do I mean, it's going to be tough, you know, they're always going to argue with you and uh, they're probably going to tell you, mind your own business, you know, and all these other things. So the best way for me, I see that my, my kids have girlfriends, so I get to, of course, include that in the cleaning, even the kids, the, the uh, girlfriend's parents, because I would hear a lot of stuff and I would just do my cleaning. I can include that in my cleaning so I he can be free and I can be free and the rest of us can be free. That's wonderful. Thank you. And if uh, you could share some of your beautiful experiences with cleaning, you know, so even though, you know, we don't clean with any outcome in mind, but some experiences that you had, which really uh, made you experience the bliss of cleaning and just the, uh, how it all unfolded. Yeah, my, 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 so as part of that marriage, sometimes you're going to have children, right? So these children, some, when you, there you we're used to have parents say something and we do it in our culture so in our in a, in the Filipino culture in Asian culture whatever the parents the, the parents are like whatever they say just do it you know so when i came here i feel like i should just follow our our culture right but then i realized uh, how beautiful the way people the kids here wants their freedom they want to be free they want to be free to make their own decisions they want to be free how to do things their way so once you as a parent if you tell them what to do they're gonna resist that and then you're gonna feel like slighted and so part of that stuff that i do the best thing i did is like just do my cleaning. So my my eldest, uh, this is my eldest was the one that uh, really showed me how to do the cleaning, because he was not uh, when he was still in in high school, he didn't really pay attention to 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 his uh, school. He doesn't have good grades. He's got long hair. He's got we're wearing like a rock star, right? And then I'm so scared. So that's part of the marriage is those children. Those children are the one, if they are okay, then you're okay. But they're showing you things that you need to work on. So I, he showed me that. And one time, he, 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 was, he, was, uh, he didn't do anything, but he was in a mall. And uh, the, one of his uh, classmates was smoking marijuana at the time. So the, 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 the security saw them. So as part of that, my son got detained, although he did not do anything, but because of the association. So I get to sit down with him and I said, why did you do that? And the police, uh, the police said, well, the reason why they, they actually detained him because the way he's dressed. So I said, why do you have to do this? I asked him, why? Do, you know, uh, so I, I, I was tearing a little bit and I said, why do you do that? And he said, dad, if people look at me that way, that is their problem. That's not my problem. 
And that's, a, that, that's, that's then a how I realized it's my problem. It's not his problem, really. So now I get to clean that stuff. And boy, I tell you, after like two years, he was telling me before that he doesn't like math. He wants to be a lawyer. He wants to be a psychologist. And I keep on telling, wow, I have a lot of things to do. And all of a sudden, turned around. He, he likes rock music. And all of a sudden, he turned around. I learned to do classical music. He cut his hair. He dresses nice. And then he took a lot of this, all the advanced math subjects in high school, he took them all. And I cannot believe it. And then, and now, and then later on, he said, I want to be an electrical engineer. Oh, really? I was, a, that was really surprising for me. And then, and then I was surprised about how his grades are, has gotten really good. So I was so surprised. See, I was not expecting something. So after those cleaning, in two years time, he turned around without me telling him anything. I didn't tell him, cut your hair or anything. No, I did not. I just did my cleaning and just God took care of him. And this is where Dr. Yulin would always tell me, you know, you need to give them back to God and because God knows what to, how to take care of them. Your job is to give them back to God. So I, you do your cleaning so you can give them back to God and God will take care of them. Not you. God will take care of them. And so that's what happened. He got into uh, uh, UC system, UC Santa Barbara. He loves that one. Uh, got his electrical engineering degree in four years. And um, so now he's, he, he met his um, fiance in the school. They were classmates. So that's, that's the bonus, I guess, for him. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. That's such a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. And also what you said, you know, it's such a beautiful message for all the parents because parents worry. They worry all the time. And when they don't know that they have this option of Ho'oponopono cleaning, it's it's it becomes stress inside them. It becomes anger inside them. There's so much that gets accumulated inside them. And then it goes out on children, it goes on, out on spouses, and it affects everyone, that worry for children. And as you said, when we get to the cleaning, we get to give them to God. And then you don't have to feel like all the time that I need to do something, which is so common, you know, that parents feel I need to do something to protect my child. I need to do something to guide them. It's my responsibility mm -hmm. to put them on the right path. And that's what creates so much conflict and so much resistance from the children and this just keeps going on and on and on so thank you for sharing that yes <clears throat> and I would love to know from you so maybe in the initial phase when you started cleaning there would be times when you know did you would you ever feel that oh you know, I'm cleaning and cleaning and nothing is happening and feeling sometimes upset and frustrated then what would you do that time So this is this is where uh, me and Dr. Yulin always talk, right? So we were saying like we would see these students come to the class, and um, you know, some of them we, we were we're looking at them, and he said some of this them they're just gonna try it maybe for thirty days if it worked or not, right? And then uh, and then they run into something, they run into a wall, and they're gonna say, well, I guess it didn't work. And so I was, I was laughing and I said, well, maybe you just need one more, you know, let's say, let's say I love you or something like that. And, you know, then the flood gets open, but they gave up so soon. And I went through that, but this is one thing that I was, um, um, an experience that really, that I'm aware that the cleaning really works. One, one time, uh, I had this uh, lady, a friend of my best friend, she, she can see things. So she was giving me a massage in my back because I have some back aches at that time. 
So she said, I saw something in your back, like some, something's wrong or something. But this, she said, but she doesn't know that while she was doing it, I'm doing my cleaning. She said, but all of a sudden, that thing that I saw, it just went away for some reason, she said. And so I didn't tell her anything. I just, I said, okay, so that's, I said, I, that's I, how I realized that, wow, the cleaning really works, you know, because she saw something in my back. She said, inside you, that something is wrong. It's not right. And all of a sudden that thing went, went away. I mean, that just went away. So it's, it's easy to actually, when you run into problems and then you try to analyze and, and actually point a finger to somebody, you, because it's so easy to point a finger to somebody instead of looking at ourselves. So when you run into that, my, my only advice would be you have to be relentless. You know, and this is where one other story that Dr. Yulin would always tell me, he said, you know, it's like, um, you know, it's been raining here in California. So I just say, hey, if you're in a car and you turn and in the, it starts to rain and you're in a car driving, and if, if you cannot see because of this rain, right? So you need to turn on your, you know, wiper blades. So the wiper blades, without the wiper blades, so you keep on cleaning, so you can see. So that, see that? It's like, because you run into a wall, you cannot see. All you see and all this wall and problems and all that other stuff that you're experiencing. You're re-experiencing all these replayed memories before so now you need to actually make sure you keep on doing it. You got to be relentless because if you're driving through the rain in your car and you turn off that wiper blades, guess what? You cannot, you're going to get into an accident because you're not going to see. So for me, it's like that. And another thing that we can do is like, if you're like in a dark room, and you keep you 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 stay in the dark room. You cannot see anything, but the best way is turn the light, and you can see. Let the light come into your life. Wow, that is so inspiring! Thank you so much for sharing that. And what uh, message would you give to our prospective participants for this lecture on marriage? What would you say to them? Well, I, what I can say, if you're inspired to go through this class, for me, this, this, this kind of lecture, I wish I had seen it before, you know, um, but Dr. Yulon told me that, hey, you came on the right time. You came on the right time. So if I have to propose, if you're inspired, to come, it, it may change your life. And it, it, it did to me. My experience of it is, I mean, it's legion every day. I've seen it, you know, I, I've seen it in all my experiences, you know, just not only even me, but I see things like, like people arguing and I apply the tools. I have, I've seen husband and wife arguing and I'm just watching and I'm cleaning and later on, on they, they stop doing it so it's just you being yourself be a hundred percent responsible you know so you don't have to blame your spouse you can take a hundred percent responsibility you don't have to blame your spouse your partner or anyone all you have to do is work with yourself god that's all you do and learning this process is the best thing that I ever had done in my life and applying it. Moment by moment, even on my waking time, I would apply it. If I wake up in, in the evening and I go to the bathroom, I keep on applying these tools. And when I wake up, I do the same thing and all throughout the day. And I notice that I don't react a lot anymore. I don't react because all our lives we, we can see anything that happens, we react to that situation. And that causes stress in our life. 
the emotions connected to those replayed memories create a stress in our lives. And that's not good. And that would also put a lot of strain for your, to your marriage life and relationship. Whatever that is, could be your spouse, your in-laws, you know, your, your children. So it could be that. So if I, I would say, if you want to give it a chance and look at, if you're inspired to do it, then we will welcome you. Anyone is welcome to come and, and see and experience for yourself if it applies for you or not. Thank you. And also I receive sometimes questions that I am into spirituality, but my partner is not. I do the cleaning, but my partner does not, or my family does not. What would you say to them? Well, it, they have to make their choices, really. I mean, that's not really for you to, to decide for them. But for me, if I do my stuff, my spouse, partner, or anyone, they will, they will benefit. I'm so grateful because my wife always likes to wait for me when to go out and for me I know why right because I do my cleaning so she would feel all these things coming up throughout right she allows me to do those things so she likes to do that and I'm grateful for that and you know and when I look at her sometimes I just look at her and then it just unfolds how beautiful that is and how she's a, a, a child of God and then, then you just appreciate, you know, what God has created for us. Everything around you, by this process, I would now start to appreciate after that, everything around me, because these are all creations of God. So it's so beautiful for me to do that. And relationships is really one of the toughest thing because you, you're not just dealing with yourself, you're dealing with somebody, somebody that's bugging the heck out of you. So either you do the choice of doing your cleaning or you don't, you're still, you're gonna suffer if you don't. But if you do, you actually gonna bring everybody else with you being free, being free and back to God. So that's why I love it. That was really beautiful and inspiring. Thank you for sharing that, Marvin. And also, I would love to know if, so this is going to be your second, uh, you know, class or lecture in India. So have you ever had any connection with India? Like, do you ever, <laughs> ha has it ever been like a part of your life in some way? So do share about that as well. So I want to tell you this, because for me, uh, first of all, I have a lot of Indian friends, right? Uh, co-workers, and my wife has a lot of Indian friends, the parents that goes to her preschool, uh, the mental salary. But before then, um, I ran into some people that invited me to attend a puja. So I would do that. And then, in fact, for so many years, I've been doing a lot of this puja, and I'm doing a lot of my chanting every day. I have malas, like you cannot believe it, right? So um, I would, I have big malas and small malas and all kinds of malas, right? And um, so I'm aware of all those um, and I've done them, you know? Uh, so I, that's for years I've been doing it. So even when I, I, uh, went to attend the first class with Dr. Yulen, I was doing this chanting, you know, like, you know, Gayatri Mantra, you know, all these others, all the mantras. I would do that. They say, you have to do this. And so I do it, right? Um, so I have so much, I mean, for me, the spirituality, you don't know, like, like Dr. Yulen would tell me, okay, at some point, you're gonna have to you're gonna just get and find the right way for you what path you're gonna be i was born and raised a catholic 
I learned, so I learned different, um, you, you know, uh, stuff there about spirituality. So, and then in the Philippines, I also learned about Kabbalah. So, so I went through that too. I know a lot of those things as well. And then I um, was also open to Hinduism, right? But the thing that really resonated with me is the, the Indian, the, the pujas, the chanting every day, because it's basically quiet my mind, you know, when you, you, when you do those uh, stuff. But then, then after that class with Dr. Yulen, I started to really see my, my past really went, you know, through this area. And I was, he said, it's, it's at some point, you're gonna have to find that path for you. So ever since I was able to let go of all this stuff, the cleaning really, really, really helped me a lot. And I've seen, you know, how powerful they are. So over the years, uh, I was grateful that Dr. William would share with me some other stuff and what I experienced and he basically carried me. And so for me, you know, having all those chanting might have also helped me to go into this path. Wow, that is so interesting and so beautiful to know that there is such an amazing Indian connection that you have. And do you like Indian movies by any chance? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, I always, <laughs> I like that actually. There's, um, I forgot that movie, but uh, I always like to watch those things. And it's, it's interesting. And it's also interesting about history because I know I was reading about a conquest of Alexander the Great in India. And then, so I was watching that and uh, how he actually respected the, you know, uh, the Indian people and did not ruin all this stuff instead of, you know, when you conquer a country, you normally uh, ravage everything. But the, he actually allowed them, he does, that's, I said, wow, that's a beautiful thing for him to do that. He actually uh, respected them. And then I always want to watch, uh, when I was a young kid, I always admire Mahatma Gandhi, you know. So like imagine somebody that's, uh, you know, just wearing a turban is able to defeat the, uh, the uh, mighty might of of the uh of england so just imagine and they became free without violence he always preached about non-violence and actually i love that movie i really love that movie and actually i read that book about gandhi you know and i i, I then i later on follow on indira gandhi so when I was, this is why I was still, I think in grade school and high school and on throughout college, I, I love to see that. And then I, I, I met people like you <laughs> and Ruhit and everybody else, you know, so um, yeah. that, that's a gift, you know, so that's a gift, it's just a gift and I, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. yeah, that is so wonderful to know and uh... And uh, so much about the Alexander that you shared, I wasn't aware of that. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And also, I uh, I must have heard in some of the other uh, instructor talking about it that even Morna visited India also uh, when she was uh, studying or creating Ho Pono Pono. Uh, is there anything that you know about that? Uh, that one I'm not aware very much, you know, I learned a lot of things about Morna through Iyahalakala because I, she transitioned when, before I, I, I took my first class, I know she started transition in 1992, but uh, all the things that I learned is through Iyahalakala uh, and then the, uh, the videos, all the things that she does, you know, and uh, so that's the only way I learned more about her. 
and of course uh you know having being just given the gift of Ho'oponopono, you know, so, and she accepted it. It was given before to some, another island in, in Hawaii and uh, they refused it. So uh, that's what Dr. Yulin told me. So it's, uh, it's just wonderful that she did that and I'm a beneficiary of that now. You know, and my family relatives and ancestors. Wow, I, I did not know that. <laughs> That's very mm. interesting to know. Yeah. And, yeah, so it was and... downloaded in, 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 that's where they have the, uh, the Hoponopono was downloaded to Morna in, in Kona, in the in Kona Island, in the big island. So that's what in the video that the, Dr. Yulin said, uh, she, one day she heard something about, Devini said, you know, lay down, prostate yourself, and I'm going to give you this three times, and only three times. <laughs> so that's what the, Dr. Yulin was saying in the video. And then, so Morna did prostate, and she heard, it was downloaded to her in Hawaiian. So all these things later on was translated to English. Wow, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And what is one thing that you absolutely loved about Dr. Ilakila Hulen? Uh, I would say his humor. He would he has he was like try to make you laugh and all that. And we, we have fun always when we are together. You know, so and uh and he loved my wife. He would always hug Miriam. So when I we see her, when I see him, he always says, How's Miriam? So that's the first thing in his mouth. And now I realize why. You know, I realize why that is. So, um, you know, Pua, the uh, coordinator in, in Japan, he, he said, like, how come you always ask about my children, not about me? Right? And then, so, Yalakara said, well, if your children are okay, that means you're okay. So that's why she asked about somebody else in your life. Because if they're okay, that means you're okay. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And if you have any closing message before we end this uh, interview, anything that you would end with? I just want to say that uh, for anyone who will find their path into Ho'oponopono, you know, if you follow this path, I know the benefits are legion. I have experienced it, and I hope if you do, you're going to experience it. I know, I know it has changed my life. And I don't even know, if I look back and look at all these experiences I had, and I said, wow, how the heck did I get out of those situations? And it's like, for me, I don't want, I don't want to say miracle, but Dr. Yulin said, there's no miracle. But I'm just going to say, wow, that's amazing. I'm in awe. And that's what I am. I'm in awe about what would happen if, to me if I did not use the tools and, and clean myself out of it. So any situation I know you can get out of that situation by actually cleaning yourself out, cleaning yourself out into anything. So whatever, you know, you think problems are, are just actually replayed memories. And all you have to do is look at yourself, make a choice. And whatever that path is, if you find yourself into this, I hope it will be through inspiration, so you know you can be yourself. A hundred percent responsibility is easy to say, but it's hard to do. This system and process that open up is so simple, but it's us who makes it hard. It's so simple that that for me, 
for every moment of my life, I do it now even. So when I go break, so I do anything, I always do my cleaning. And at the end of the day, you know, I feel free. I feel good. And, you know, I feel energized. And I'm ready for some more stuff. But divinity doesn't... All these things that's happening in your life or experiencing are just replayed memories. You've experienced this before. And now the divinity gives you a chance to actually make amends. And for me, making amends is, is always, in my mind, I'm always conscious about it. Making amends, whoever I, I met. So like you, I met you. I'm pretty sure we run into each other years or eons or lifetimes ago. And now I'm given a chance to make it right for you, your family, relatives, and ancestors. So I'm grateful for whoever, whoever participated in this lecture that you'll find your way into this. And if you, that you find your way into whatever that is you want to be at, be free and be yourself. Thank you so much for those beautiful words and all your cleaning. Thank you so no, much. Thank you very much, Gate. I'm, I'm grateful that you did come to that class and you know, I'm so grateful. And I saw that actually in that class after, I mean, I can just see your, your face change. I'm always watching the students' faces, you know, and I see everything like, wow, look at this. I didn't even, I thought you're going to do it right away, being a coordinator and instructor in India, but I guess it took years to do that yes. to happen. <laughs> yes, when I saw was... you, I said, my gosh, that lady is going to be something. I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if I said that to Miriam, but at the time I said, she is wonderful. She's just going to do it. And there, here, you, here you are now. And I'm, we're grateful because whatever you do in India will always help us move forward. Yes, yes. I guess it took a lot of cleaning. I had to clean a lot before I could be ready to take this yeah. and, you know, share this with others. And uh, so, and of course, it did take me time. Like, I just started doing it. Uh, I would just do it every day, the 12 steps and everything. The belief maybe took some time to come in, but I just kept doing it and you know just doing it without thinking and mm. and then it just uh, you know I don't know when it happened and how it happened but it just became a very important part of my life and that class that I took with you that was uh, very very profound I don't think that is one of the most special uh, experiences of my life thank you so much for that <laughs> no thank you I mean like Dr. Yulen would tell me he would say these people show up in the class, uh, it's, it's perfect, right? It's perfect because they're there for a reason. And we don't know what that is until later, they'll, they'll find out for themselves. So that's, that's good, you know, for, for me, it's good because then I was able to do my cleaning with you. And that means that includes your family, relatives and ancestors. And for sure, uh, when I was a kid, I was, admire all these people from India, like Gandhi and everybody else. <laughs> so, so now I get to meet a lot more people, you know, to, uh, to have to deal with India. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. It's just yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And you. you are wonderful in that class, you know. That's why Miriam said, you really flew from India? Remember that? <laughs> yes, I remember. She would look at me, you came from India? I know. And there's one, and one Indian minister that called me, by the way, on the phone. I was on my way to my first class in Japan. Uh, and then this guy called me. I don't know, for some reason, um, he got my cell phone number. So I said, you know, uh, and he said, I want, this, I want this class to be here in India. He was a minister of something. And I said, OK, uh, just go ahead and email. I, I told him to email. Ihalakla or Hokupana, because I, that day I was on the, my way to the airport to, to, to fly to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so just imagine that. See, now it, it came through. So you're, you're yes. there now. So this is good. Yeah. yeah. 
and and i remember when i came to that class i was very nervous you know i was really young and i hadn't traveled outside india before and miriam was the one who made me feel very comfortable for some reason you know she would mm. she she was always so warm and you know with so much warm she would come and talk to me and i felt really uh, welcomed and very safe just because she was so warm towards me and and i never got to thank her so i would really love for you to convey that to her from me oh, i'll tell alter miriam she's just like that always for the doing that for the students she always does that and then she would come to, uh, you know talk to me and say you know that lady she wants to go through the hair and all that and so i end up doing those stuff <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's just that way she's very helpful to everybody you know yeah, so that, yeah. that's so beautiful so uh, should we end with the closing prayer sure let's do let's do it let me do the english first yes the peace of i peace be with you all my peace the peace that is i the peace that is i am the peace for always now and forever and evermore my peace i give to you my peace i leave with you not the world's peace, but only my peace, the peace of life. Thank you. Shanti mein ki. Shanti tumhare saath ho. Meri sari shanti. Shanti jo hoon mein. Shanti jo mein hoon. Shanti hamesha ke liye. Abhi aur hamesha aur hamesha ke liye. Meri shanti mein tumhye deti hoon. Meri shanti mein tumhare paas chhoorti hoon. Dunia ki shanti nahi. केवल मेरी शांति शांति मैं की थैंक यू थैंक यू टेक केयर